Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with another crochet stitch, a Tunisian crochet stitch. I'm all of a sudden all into the Tunisian crochet and I'm going to show you the knit stitch and I'm going to tell you right away, I love the looks of it. It's not my favorite stitch, especially worked as is. Look how curly it is. You could watch a hundred different videos and you might hear a hundred different ways as to how to stop the curling. And of those hundred different ways, I can almost guarantee you zero of them will work. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because if you're making blocks for an afghan or something, they're going to be stitched together. If you make an entire gigantic afghan, you can put a border around it and that will stop it. Um, the other thing is, is that if you use a thick, you know, this is just regular four-ply acrylic yarn, you really need a big hook, and then it would make it more relaxed. Now, I actually used a bigger hook than this. This is, uh, what is this one? How come I can't see what it is? I should know by heart, because I tell you all the time. It's a K size, ten and a half K. The other one I used for this was N, size N, so it was bigger. Still very curly, but that's okay. Even if you don't like this swatch, I want you to learn the stitch because we will be using it in other projects. Now, there's a couple of things I want to show you before we start. When we chain and get started, and I'll be showing you that, this is the way I normally do it. I have a different way now, and I forgot to do it on this swatch, but that's okay because I was actually making two swatches, so I can show you the difference. This is the way that we have been doing it in the past, and this is the way that I do it now. It's just a tiny bit, um, maybe a tiny bit, where the heck am I, more time consuming, but it's such a better edge. It looks like we finished it off like with a line of crochet. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to finish it off at the top, but that's okay. So this is what our new edge is going to look like compared to this. See how it's just not finished off as nice? I like this much better. So this is what I'm going to be doing from now on. And we'll be coming back to this little swatch in a few minutes. We're just going to get started now, and I'm just going to show you how to do this. And I'm still using this yarn, and I am using the smaller hook because the, the bigger hook, it, it's clumsy for me. I don't like to work with a really big hook. You could try this with like a baby weight yarn and a fairly big hook, and, you know, the curling might relax at that point. Even if you press this with steam, it's going to curl. I don't care what kind of borders you put around it, it's going to curl. But like I said, if you were to make an afghan and you sew a bunch of these together, obviously if you put a border all the way around it, hey, who knows, it still might curl. But don't worry about it. Learn the stitch. We're going to do cool things with it later. If you need a basic video on how to start a chain and things like that, the slip knot, I'll have that in the description below. I'm going to just chain for this tutorial. Let's just do eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, right here is where I'm going to show you what we're going to do differently. Normally, we go into the first available chain, which is the actually the second chain from the hook. We don't ever use the one that the yarn is already coming out of. Normally, we go here, under that thread right there. But we're going to go into the bump in the back. So let's just look at this. This is how it looks here. If you turn it, see there's like a bump that goes like little bumps like I don't know on the back of a dinosaur <laughs> we are going to look at the stitch this is the stitch we normally want so we want the bump behind that one and it's right there it's a little bit more tedious but you do get used to it and it uh, is worth it and we just pull through and leave it right there on the hook and now the next bump is right here if you get confused, it can be easy to get confused. You can always turn it around and look at what you're familiar with and then say, okay, I want this stitch and it's going to be right there, right behind there. And you're just going to go onto each bump on the back and pull through. And that's going to make this nice edge 
which makes it easier to join blocks. When you have a nice crocheted edge like that, that's nice, as opposed to this, which is even like stretched out, and it tends to do that. So, do like this much better. Under the bump. And then that last one, you know, it can get a little tricky. You just go under that bump right there. Okay. Now we're going to do our regular Tunisian crochet pass to go back. What is it called? Uh, return pass. Go, you yarn over, yarn over. Go through just one. Then you yarn over and go through two all the way. Yarn over through two, 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 yarn over through two. Whoops. Until you're left with just one left one um, chain left on your hook and you're done. Okay, normally for our regular simple stitch, it can be called Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian basic crochet, and also Afghan stitch. And I think I'm going to go with Tunisian simple stitch because I do believe that's what they use for the abbreviation in instructions, TSS. Normally we take our hook this is our first stitch, so we never go into this first um, vertical bar. We usually go into that one. Normally we go under and pull through. That's what I've showed you before. Under, pull through. But for the knit stitch, we're not going to do that. So let's undo. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the vertical bar, but instead of going under it, you're just going to see how it has like a loop there, you're just going to go right through it to the back. When you try it, this is very easy. You can just feel where it goes. So instead of under the bar, you just go to the right side of that bar, go right through to the back, and then you just leave your loop on the hook. So the next one, right through to the back, pull through. Here's your next bar, right through to the back, pull through, right through to the back right through to the back. Now here at the end, again, normally we go under this last one, and I always say to you guys, if you can't spot it, well, you can see that these stitches here are horizontal and this one is up and down. That's where we want to go. And normally for just the simple stitch, we just go like this and pull through. Well, when I was doing that, let's look at this. See here, if you go through just that one like I showed you, all this is even, and then this last row here on the edge, it's a little funky. You know, on this edge, it's nice. It's all knit stitch, knit stitch, and then I was like, what gives? I watched a few videos. Every single person that I watched showed us going under the bar like we normally do, and they end up with this edge. And I was like, maybe there's a way we can do differently. And then look, look at here. I have it so that it's all knit, and it just looks the same all the way across. So obviously I like this better than this. So here's what we do. Instead of going under just that one, we're going to, let's see what we can, it's actually this thread here too, but we're going to go, the next row will be easier. We're going to go behind these two. See when I go behind there? See there's two strands now? It's like what we're doing here. When we go here, we're going through to the back and pulling through, and it's kind of like what we're doing there, but we want to make sure we get behind the two strands. When you try it, you'll understand what I mean. You'll feel it. And that's going to give us that nice edge. And then our return pass is always the same. There's exceptions. I'll be doing return passes different down the road, but for now it's always the same. You yarn over and go through just one. Then you yarn over, go through two, 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 go through two. Very quick and easy once you get the hang of it. Let's do one more row so I can show you the end. 
we're just going next to our to the right side of our vertical bar and going right through to the back right through to the back And here's our last one. It gets easier now. After the foundation row, it's easier. You can see on the side, there's like a little crisscross thing. You're just going to go right there. So you're just going, instead of just under your bar, you're just going to this side of the bar, and you're picking up those two strands. And there you go. So you can tell. See? It's just a nice, pretty knit now. Let's look and see what it would look like if we went just under the bar. I'm going to show you. If you go just under the bar and you pull through, see, it leaves a little weird bar right there. And that's what makes it funky. But if we go through both, <laughs> that little bar disappears. So don't be afraid to try things. You don't have to do what you're taught. All right, yarn over, go through one, and then through two. Through two, through two, through two, through two, through two, through two. I'm going fast because I have basic videos on these. And then to finish off, you would do just like we normally do, but you would still continue to go all the way through. So we're going to go uh, find our next available post. We're going all the way through to the back, pull through, and then loosely just do a slip stitch. So you go through to the back, pull through, and then just pull right through to the next, you know, right through the next stitch. Through to the back. You know, you can work it in one motion like this. Go through both. Just make sure that you're doing it nice and loose. Go through the back, through both. Or you can just pull through and then pull through. A good way to know that you're doing it loose enough is you pull through and pull on that. Make it nice and, you know, tall and then pull it through. And the same here, you're still going to go under your two threads, pull through, pull through, and you'd be done. And see, the bottom and the top match, I like that so much more, working on the back bump of that foundation chain. And you can see that it's all the same all the way across. So this is super mega thick. And it kind of looks like pearl on the back. If you're familiar with knitting, knit and pearl. There's actually a way to do pearl stitch on the front too, and we're going to do that the next time I do some Tunisian crochet. If you guys like a really heavy blanket, I mean, this, this, is, this is thick, and that would make a nice blanket. But don't rush to make anything now because I will be showing you some cool ways to do things. So just uh, please subscribe so you don't miss that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye.